Greetings from Academy IPSM eConnect. We, the team Rekindless, present the 14th capsule of public health update series covering the months from April to June 2023. This capsule covers three themes. The first part will focus on non-communicable disease and communicable disease. The second part will focus on nutrition. The third and final part will focus on vaccines. I'm Dr. Chandana, Assistant Professor, Department of Community Medicine, ESIC Medical College, Bengaluru. Today, I'm here to present three important public health updates from the period between April and June 2023. First update about NCD is Implementation Roadmap for Accelerating the Prevention and Control of Non-Communicable Diseases in Southeast Asia Region. The roadmap provides us with strategic directions and tools with a view to prioritizing and accelerating high-impact interventions that are feasible within the national context. It provides guidance for prevention and control of NCDs, including links and tools for easy access. It will be available on the Southeast Asia Region NCD web portal. The web portal will also feature good practices from countries and will be regularly updated with additional guidance as it is produced. There are three strategic directions under the roadmap. First strategic direction is to sustain. We need to sustain the progress made in the national response to the NCDs. The second direction tells us to prioritize and accelerate. We need to prioritize and accelerate the implementation of the most impactful and feasible interventions in the national context, including through digital health and other innovations. The last strategic direction is account. We need to promote accountability through timely, reliable, and sustained national data on NCD risk factors, diseases, and mortality, which will help us to reach the NCD targets by 2030. Countries can consider establishing a national think tank or a country coordinating mechanism to ensure commitment and functional synergies across sectors. Second update that happened during the period is renaming of the National Program for Prevention and Control of Cancer, Diabetes, Cardiovascular Diseases and Stroke to National Program for Prevention and Control of Non-Communicable Diseases. This was done to provide coverage and expansion to all the other non-communicable diseases. The third update is about World Malaria Day 2023, observed on 15 April, marked under the theme, Time to Deliver Zero Malaria, Invest, Innovate and Implement. Within this theme, WHO is urging more effective implementation of available tools and strategies to prevent, diagnose, and treat malaria, particularly among marginalized populations. The WHO African region continues to shoulder the heaviest burden of the disease, accounting for an estimated 95% of all the cases and 96% of all the deaths in 2021. Nearly 80% of the malaria deaths in the African region were among the children under the age group of 5. Countries have made some progress in expanding access to malaria services for most at-risk populations. Despite some progress, many people at high risk of malaria still lack access to services that can prevent, detect, and treat the disease. To address these threats and support countries in building more resilient malaria programs, WHO recently published new strategies and frameworks, including a new strategy to contain anti-malarial drug resistance in Africa, a new initiative to stop the spread of anaphylis defense in urban environments, a new framework developed jointly by WHO and UN Habitat to guide city leaders in urban malaria control, a new toolkit to help countries assess their malaria surveillance systems and identify areas for investment. Under the prospects of new intervention, the malaria vaccine RTSS, which was launched in 2019, is going to help us in increasing equity in access to malaria prevention for the most vulnerable and is also going to help us in saving lives. If implemented broadly, WHO estimates that malaria vaccine could save the lives of tens of thousands of children each year. Continued investment in the development and deployment of new vaccines and next generation tools will be the key to achieve the 2030 malaria global targets. In that context, a second malaria vaccine, R21, which is on clinical trial, if approved, could help close the sizable gap between supply and demand and further reduce child illness and death from malaria. And also one more thing that will be happening in India is malaria is going to become a notifiable disease across the country. Cases should be reported to the government authorities aim is to make India malaria free by 2027 and eliminate the disease by 2030. 
Now over to Dr. Dipanshi for further updates. Thank you, ma'am. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Dipanshi, and I will tell you about the important and prevalent topics. Let's see what happened recently in National Family Health Survey. The anemia estimation is excluded from the upcoming National Family Health Survey. The prevalence of anemia in previous survey exhibited a significant increase among all age groups and this overestimation was due to the use of a digital hemoglobinometer that measures hemoglobin levels using capillary blood. Therefore, from now onwards, the Diet and Biomarker Survey in India will conduct anemia prevalence estimation to overcome this limitation by utilizing venous samples and standardized auto-analyzers. Currently, pilot surveys for DAPS are underway and are projected to be completed within a year, providing valuable insights into nutritional status and anemia prevalence. Now, Let's have a look at India's progress against malnutrition as reported by National Family Health Survey 5. The nutrition indicators for children under 5 years which are stunting, wasting and underweight have improved as compared with the National Family Health Survey 4. However, obesity is still a concern. This shows there is insufficient progress to reach the 2025 World Health Assembly Global Nutrition and 2030 SDG targets. Moving further on the next update, the Union Cabinet approved a scheme to distribute fortified rice under government programs. Phase 1 covered ICDS and PM portion which was implemented during 21 and 22. For the Phase 2, a total of 269 districts in 27 states have started distributing fortified rice under targeted public distribution system, achieving a 100% target set by March 2023. Now, Phase 3, the department is geared to complete the coverage of all the remaining districts excluding wheat consuming ones before the targeted date of March 2024. Continuous efforts are being made to educate the public about the nutritional benefit of fortified rice through IEC campaigns involving Food Safety and Standards Authority of India, experts and development partners. That's all from my side. Now over to Dr. Swati ma'am for the next update. Greetings to one and all watching this update capsule. I am Dr. Swati Shikha, Assistant Professor in the Department of Community Medicine at Manipal Tata Medical College, Jamshedpur. I'll be covering uh, six important public health updates for the period from April to June 2023. The topics are World Immunization Week 2023, Global Vaccine Research Collaborative, Vaccine Microarray Patch, Arrowexy, Saksham and Health of Youth, Wealth of Nation. World Immunization Week is celebrated in the last week of April, 24th to 30th April, with the aim to highlight the collective action needed to protect people from vaccine-preventable diseases. Under the banner of the Big Catch-Up, WHO is working with partners to support countries to restore their level of immunization coverage to the pre-pandemic times and ensure more people are protected from vaccine-preventable diseases. The focus is to catch up the millions of children who missed out on vaccines during the pandemic and strengthen primary health care to deliver immunization services. The ultimate goal of World Immunization Week is for children, adults and their communities to be protected from vaccine-preventable diseases, allowing them to live a ha happier and healthier lives. The next topic is Global Vaccine Research Collaborative Towards Vaccine Equity. The Department of Pharmaceuticals, Government of India, along with Program for Appropriate Technology in Health, PATH, and Coalition for Academ uh, Epidemic Preparedness Innovations, CEPI, have come together with an agreement, the Global Vaccine Research Collaborative. This initiative will focus on addressing major gaps in research for vaccine development, 
uh, before the next pandemic, establishing a structure and principles for better vaccine research and development preparedness and creating a mechanism for improving coordination and fostering an enabling environment for vaccine research and development. Moving ahead with the next topic, which is vaccine microarray patches. It is an intradermal vaccine delivery technology for vaccination. It is an alternative to intramuscular and subcutaneous immunization methods, making it easier to administer the vaccine. The advantages of vaccine microarray patches are, they do not require the use of needle, can improve safety during administration, reduces the need for cold chain, enables easier storage and transportation, and removes the risk of needle wastage. Moving ahead with the next uh, topic, that is Arvexi. Arvexi is the first respiratory syncytial virus vaccine approved by FDA in the United States for the prevention of lower respiratory tract diseases caused by RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, in individuals 60 years of age and older. And this was uh, approved on 3rd of May 2023. Saksham which stands for Stimulating Advanced Knowledge for Sustainable Health Management. It is a learning management information system developed by the National Institute of Health and Family Welfare, NIHFW, New Delhi. It is a dedicated and unified platform for providing online training and medical education to all health professionals in the country. This digital learning platform will ensure inclusive capacity building of health professionals from primary health centers located in rural and remote areas all the way up to tertiary care and corporate hospitals in metropolitan cities. The last update for this capsule is Health of Youth, Wealth of Nation. The Union Ministry of Health and Family Welfare, in collaboration with the Partnership for Maternal, Newborn, Child Health, PN, PMNCH, Geneva, had organized a G20 co-branded event titled Health of Youth, Wealth of Nation on June 20, 2023 at New Delhi. Aim of this global gathering was to highlight the health and well-being needs of 1.8 billion adolescents and youth worldwide and to foster increased tension and investment by G G20 nations in the health of adolescents and youth. These youth, uh, young individuals represent a valuable asset for any nation and investing in their health and well-being plays a critical role in achieving economic growth and development targets. One of the objective of this event was to empower youth as change makers in the society as well as foster dialogue and engagement among policymakers government officials, experts, partner agencies, and the youth icons from G20 nations. This event emphasizes the need to invest in the health and well-being of adolescents and youth. With this, we conclude the update for the month of April to June 2023. Our team, the Rekindlers, is constituted by Dr. Chandana H., Assistant Professor in ESIC Medical College, Bengaluru, Dr. Deepanshi Saxena, Senior Resident, SNMC Agra, and myself, Dr. Swati Shikha, Assistant Professor, Manipal Tata Medical College, Jamshedpur. At this point, we would like to extend our heartfelt gratitude to our advisors, Dr. Malatesh Undi, Dr. Parag Chavra, and Dr. Girish B for their valuable inputs and constant support and motivation. We would also take the opportunity to extend our sincere gratitude to the senior IAPSM office bearers, Dr. A. M. Kadri, President IAPSM, Dr. Purushottam Giri, Secretary General IAPSM, Dr. Annarao Kulkarni, President-elect IAPSM, and Dr. Harivans Chopra, Immediate Past President, for their guidance. Thank you for watching this video. And we hope that you all are positively enlightened with these updates. The Academia IAPSM eConnect will soon come up with the next capsule on public health updates. Kindly subscribe to our channel Academia IAPSM eConnect and click on the bell icon to receive the notifications. Till we meet again, stay connected, stay safe. Jai Hind!